COVID testing in Ontario is around 40,000 people per day now, and although cases have reached peak numbers comparable to that of April, deaths and hospitalizations have remained quite low. Now, the day Doug Ford announced a province-wide mandate for masks, October 2nd, the province recorded 76 deaths, but numbers lacked some significant transparency when the mandate was announced. Coincidentally, on that day, Ontario added data from previous months, adding 73 cases and 74 deaths. Ontario Health Minister Christine Elliott said, Due to the data review at Toronto Public Health, a number of cases and deaths that occurred in the spring or summer are being reported today. Not only was this footnote not mentioned in the press conference, the added 73 cases was enough to boost Ontario to a single day high for case numbers, which makes it a lot easier to argue for a new mask rule. So what exactly is a case? This is rarely, if ever, brought up in daily pressers or mainstream articles. Most people think a case equals a positive COVID test. That's not true. There are, in fact, three different types of cases, according to the government. The first is probable case. This is a person without a test who has traveled to an affected area before having symptoms, has been in close contact with a confirmed case, or lived or worked in a facility with a known outbreak. This also includes a person with symptoms comparable with COVID-19. So technically, a person who has never been anywhere near getting a test can count as a case so long as they've been in the general area of an outbreak. The second type is a presumptive confirmed case, which according to the official website is no longer being used, leaving just confirmed cases, which thankfully is a laboratory confirmed COVID-19 case. This information combined with the fact that official data pages state active cases are defined as quote, the number of people who have tested positive for COVID-19, because on the same page, daily cases doesn't use the term active, but under hospitalizations, active is specifically used. I know it's a mouthful. So even though death has remained low, politicians are still using case numbers that I'm not sure we can actually trust to enforce these lockdowns and rules. They're even adding numbers from previous months to support their decision making. They're doing it everywhere. They're doing it in Quebec as well, where they are adding deaths from, quote, unknown dates to their daily counts. Not sure how that's a thing. And if you recall, Quebec had to remove almost 25,000 cases due to reporting errors earlier this year. Quebec's numbers are essentially double that of Ontario's, and that seems to be the threshold for police checkpoints and mandatory quarantine zones. It's not just Quebec either. Ontario's positivity rate is about 1.5% right now. And in New York, a 3% positivity rate is enough for Andrew Cuomo, the governor, to say you don't have the right to congregate to practice your religion anymore. The religious leaders do not agree to abide by these rules. Uh, then we will close the religious institutions, period. Case definitions, positivity rates, and overall risk of death are things that need to be included in these press conferences and articles so people are fully informed of the relative risks. For example, you've probably heard people complaining about students being sent back to school, even though students are the demographic who are least at risk. Under 19 years old, there has been just two deaths in the entire country in that age group. This is the type of information that people need to know, not panic over simple case numbers. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Leave us a comment with your opinions on this subject and go to maskexemption.ca to get your mask exemption button.